Happy Saturday. I hope that you're all ready to paint. I hope that you have gotten your supplies together. Anyways, I'm going to sit at my table this morning and go ahead and try my best to teach a paint class um, that I'm going to record and then put up for you guys to be able to access because of the crazy times that we're living through right now. Lots of paint parties ended up having to get canceled. So I thought with everything that's going on, this might be a nice way for us to kind of come together in a way and just do something fun, turn off the news, turn off social media, give yourself and your spirit a little bit of quiet time and just put some happy color onto a canvas. So I hope that you have fun. I'm not techie at all, so I'm, this is very low budge. I'm not exactly sure if this is gonna turn out right. But um, anyways, I figured that we could have a little bit of fun together. I hope that when you're finished, you'll post your picture on my Facebook page at Mary Grover Davis. I would love to see what you end up painting. If you have painted with me at all, you know that my very favorite part is at the very end when we all can look and see how differently everybody processes and paints the same picture. So anyways, I hope that you will have a good time. I hope that you'll have fun. And I hope that in the very near future, we can hang out together again. So grab your favorite drink, get your things ready, put on your favorite music, um, and let's paint. All right, we're ready to go. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our entire canvas black. So I want you to go ahead and shake up your black. I use a piece of tin foil for my palette, but you could use a paper plate. You could use a tup, you know, like um, a Cool Whip lid. Really, you could use anything you want. I'm using a foam brush and I'm not getting it wet. So we're gonna dip the ice skate blade of our brush into our black paint. And then I'm just gonna work fast and I'm gonna work in small areas and I'm gonna squish out enough paint that with not a lot of pressure, I can blend it in. So I'm really not putting any pressure at all on my foam brush. Now, if you're getting marks like that, you're trying to do too big of an area and you don't have enough paint on your brush. I really think it's best to just dip that blade into your paint. It's a sponge there at the end, so it sucks up a ton of paint, kind of mush it out, but then don't let that, like when I mush out my paint, see how it's thick and gloppy? You don't wanna leave it that way. So you wanna work quickly to get that blended in. This takes quite a bit of paint, but it's just fun and just kind of starts the whole process for us. Now, if you're pushing so hard on your brush that like pieces of the brush are, are coming out into your canvas, once your paint dries, you can just kind of rub your canvas and get, get that off of there. Um, but really, you should have enough paint in any small area that you don't have to put any pressure on these brushes. These foam brushes are really cheap, but they're so awesome to coat big areas like this. And you can get several uses out of them as long as you're not real hard on them. If I would put a ton of pressure on this brush, it would, it would tear very easily. Because down in here, there's like a piece of plastic. So if I put a ton of pressure on this, that plastic's gonna tear right through this sponge. But if you use enough paint, that you can get it to move around on your canvas pretty gently. You should be able to get a couple of uses out of this brush. The other thing, if you've painted with me, you know that we do not put this brush into water until I tell you that we're completely done with it. 
Now our real paint brushes, we can't just lay, lay down beside us and leave the paint in them. That will ruin those brushes quicker than anything. See how there's a little piece of something got on my painting? You can just knock it right off. Now go ahead and get your entire canvas painted black. Now we have to wait and let this dry before we can do our next layer. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off for a minute. I'm going to paint my edges and then I'm going to let it dry. So you go ahead and do that part too. All right, we're back. My canvas is dry. I admit I did cheat when I turned off my camera. I grabbed my blow dryer and I went ahead and got this dry quicker than it would have on its own. You know that your canvas is ready for another layer of paint when you can kind of hold it towards the light and you don't see wet, shiny paint. So my canvas is good and dry. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to lay down kind of a, a dry brush effect over top of this black. This black underneath to me gives it more of an old um, kind of a rough look and I like that. So I'm going to shake up my white paint now and I'm just going to pour some out here on my palette. I probably have roughly a quarter size. Now you noticed when I did my uh, background, every time I poured paint out, I probably used about a quarter's worth. This paint dries pretty quickly and becomes thick and clumpy and gross. So I knew that I would need to you know, get more black probably three or four times to get this covered. But if I had poured out that much paint, before I had finished, that paint would have been dry and clumpy. So for me, I think it's always better to just smart small, start small and then grab more paint when you need it. So anyways, I am using my same dirty foam brush that still has black paint in it. Remember, this is a sponge, so there's still a lot of paint left in here. Um, now, you could go ahead and grab another brush to do this layer, but I just like sticking with the brush that I started with. So I'm going to just very gently dab the blade of my brush into the white paint. Now, if I would really smush this into my white paint, the black that's already in here would mush out and mix, and I would get some kind of a dirty gray color. And I, I really want it to be cleaner and whiter. So I just very delicately dip the blade of my brush. And when I say the blade, I'm not like laying my whole brush down into my paint. I am just dipping just the blade of my brush. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of white and I'm gonna go ahead and start. Uh, I'll start here. Now, I didn't put a ton of pressure on my brush when I did my black background. I'm gonna put less pressure on my brush for this layer. So I literally am barely touching my canvas. Again, if I put a lot of pressure, a lot of that black paint would come out too. The idea on this layer too, if you've ever painted a wall, you know how you really want your coverage to be solid and thick. I don't want my coverage to be solid and thick, so I don't want you to think of painting this layer like you would paint uh, a wall in your house. I want you to just very feathery really is the, the amount of pressure that I'm putting on this brush. Super feathery. Now you notice that when I'm doing this, different places, maybe I, maybe I used a little bit more pressure 
I mean, not really on purpose, but you'll see when you look at my background, you know, this is really thin, this is a little heavier, that's good. I'm happy with that because to me, what, what this will end up looking like when we're completely finished, and you gotta hang with me through the whole process to get there, but what it will end up looking like is just like old wood. And when old wood is outside and it weathers, it does not all weather exactly the same. There are areas where that paint kind of stays on the wood a little bit longer, a little better. And then there are areas where it just about comes completely off. Now we're gonna do another layer of this, so I don't want you to, to think, gosh, I don't know about this, Mary. Just hang with me. To me, pretty painting is all about lots of layers. And between every layer, we've got to let our paint dry a little bit. Otherwise, you don't get the really pretty uh, highlights. It just all kind of mushes into one solid color. And at least for me, that's not the, that's not the look that, that I like. Now, another thing that you could do is you could use an old credit card, an old gift card, and you could, oh, there's a dog, sorry about that. You could dip the card into whatever color you wanted to use. And you just kind of get, get some texture like that. I really like that too. I know my lighting isn't fantastic, but it creates a different kind of texture. And I think we will use this maybe when we do our actual flower box and we may use it down here on our tabletop. But for right now, I just want you to do one layer across your canvas like this, and I want you to let that dry. All right, my canvas is dry and ready for another layer of this, what I call a dry brush effect. Again, this brush is still dry. No water has been on it. Still has the black paint in it. Now it has some white paint on the tip. So see now, we've got the black layer that's dry. We've got the first layer of our dry brush that's dry. Because we let all that paint dry well, now when we put on this third layer of paint, it's so much brighter. Now I'm going for a look I imagine that my flower box is sitting on some awesome old table that I pulled out of the trash, you know, in one of, one of my adventures, maybe I found this beautiful old table in somebody's trash. I stopped, I loaded it up in the back of my car. So I imagine that that is sitting on my porch and that I have a section of a, a porch that just has this beautiful old wood that's nice and weathered. That's the look I'm going for. That's what's in my mind as I'm painting this. And you can tell again too, I'm putting no pressure on this brush. Now down here, I'm gonna show you what would happen if I put a lot of pressure. See how much, and it's gray, and you can see a lot of black. That's not what we want. So, I want you to be painting. Barely putting any pressure on that brush. And the only way that that will work is if you have enough paint on the, on the tip of this brush.
Now see where I really mushed my brush hard and got this kind of gray glob that came out? That paint right there is really wet. And if I try to put some white over top of it, see how it just kind of mushes into the same dull gray? That's not what we're going for. We want it to be nice. Bright, clean, white paint. I'm gonna get some more. So you do not wanna have so much paint on your brush that when you put it on your canvas, it's thick like cream cheese on a hot bagel. If you get that much paint, that's too much. But you just want there to be enough paint on that tip that you really are putting zero pressure on this brush. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but sometimes where your paintbrush stops, you can kind of see the stop line. I do like to kind of try to go over those and hide those. It happens to everybody. So if that happens on your picture, I don't want you to think that you're doing something wrong, you're not. It just happens. Just kind of try to work with it. And cover it up a little bit. I'm hardly putting any paint on my brush and this paint that's going on my canvas is light and dry I'm just gonna kind of keep layering here and there trying to get that look of you know an old white farmhouse paint has weathered and worn through the years. Let's see if I can get some white to go over that spot where I had that like mushy gray paint. A little bit. Remember too that we're going to create a tabletop here and then our flower box is going to sit right here. So honestly most of this is going to fade into the background but this is, this is where we have to start, and honestly, the background is super important. Because I have, you know, ended up painting pictures that I really liked and then really hated the background. <laughs> so, that doesn't work. That's not good. So this part takes some time, but it's really worth it. Oh, and see here, I put a little too much pressure on this brush. A little bit of my black mushed out, so that's wet here right now. See? So now I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'll go back and I'll kind of lighten that up. So anyways, go ahead and do another layer of dry brush on your canvas. And then when we come back, we're gonna put that some of that tabletop down, and then we're gonna create our box and then it's really going to start coming to life when we start putting flowers in it. <laughs> 